Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Let's Talk 3.0. Tonight, our guests, who are some of the most brilliant minds, will help us shed the light on some of the hottest topics, including crypto, blockchain, metaverse, and Web3. With us now, our guest, Dr. Vilma Matila, who is the co-founder of Firechain, which is a fifth-generation blockchain ecosystem. Welcome, Dr. Vilma, and thank you for joining us here today at Let's Talk 3.0. Thank you. A pleasure to be here and I'm very much looking forward to it. We've heard a lot about blockchain and we've discussed this in previous episodes, but we, we are not much aware about what exactly is the fifth generation blockchain. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between a fifth generation blockchain and other blockchain uh, systems? Yes. So in this case, it's focused on 5.0 technologies, which means emerging technologies, as well as integrating uh, tech capabilities such as well such as direct connectivity to IoT devices, as well as traceability of AI data, as well as uh, facilitating progress towards technologies 5.0, such as for example embedded embedding file sharing system in smart contracts. For example, right now if I'm executing smart contracts, it's only an action of if this then that. However, in our case, you can uh, uh, include files in it. You can also include data from IoT devices, as mentioned, and you can enhance the traceability of technologies which weren't before sensor connected to blockchain. So it's sensor data connected to blockchain. 5.0 5 in this case obviously means uh, all the flows of emerging technologies such as IoT, AI, and, and uh, big data. Uh, so we basically do data scraping and formulate uh, outcomes which we store on chain. And individuals are themselves capable of uh, writing scripts which expands current user case of smart contracts. So for example, before I could send you money, I could send you NFTs, I could send you different digital assets. Now I can also send you uh, videos through smart contracts that send you more heavy files, send you files directly peer to peer. You mentioned on your LinkedIn, how to make technologies more sustainable. Can you please tell us what exactly do you mean by more sustainable from a technological perspective? Yes. Obviously, technology always has the problem of carbon footprint or challenges of not recognizing how much energy, electricity uh, or overall natural resources we are using towards it. So, for example, in our case, instead of proof of work, which is based on how much electricity you use and proof of stake, which is based on how much money you have, the more money you will make, in our case, we track enterprises and validators and clients in this case based on how sustainable they are. Let's say, for example, we have now ranking of 100 companies and let's say Coca-Cola is moving towards uh, uh, hydropower and Coca-Cola will be ranking one of the highest in the sustainability if they integrate sustainable for electricity. So in case of Ethereum, if you had the most Ethereum, you your stake uh, would be obviously higher and your rewards will be higher. In our case, if you are one of the validator enterprises and you rank high in sustainability, we pay for you. Therefore, we pay enterprising for taking sustainable action and the enterprises are the validators of the chain. So for example, right now, some of the validators are Huawei, Google Cloud, Booking.com at this current moment. Why? Uh, it's all started when I got a call from eToro and they mentioned, Vilma, uh, would, we would love to know how sustainable the companies are that we have because our clients are asking what is the environmental footprint of, of the companies where they invest into. However, we don't know. And we heard that you have an index. So that's what we do. We index companies based on not just actions on environmental, social, and governance, but based on results. Because everybody is 
uh, promoting the actions. However, nobody knows what are the results. So often when we go to speak with, with uh, multinationals, I ask, okay, excellent. You have 10 activities toward sustainability. However, how are you measuring the results? What are the results? They don't know. So this same applied to eToro, which have obviously significant amount of clients uh, who want to trade, in this case, stocks. Um, and they, clients have the, uh, have the inquiry on, on how sustainable the companies are and how are they reporting their sustainability data, how green they are, what kind of results are they obtaining. And we provide data mechanism for such uh, enterprises such as, for example, eToro in this case, to classify how sustainable in the enterprises are. Therefore, to simply explain this, in, in Bitcoin, you will have a mining machine which will calculate the output of the reward. In our case, we have 17 criteria in which all of them have a different weight and we weight enterprises based on that sustainability criteria. We take their public traceable uh, sustainability data, which needs to be uh, reported, and we insert that into an algorithm and we get an output of what is their sustainability ranking. So we store, process, and translate all this data on chain. And, and that's how we make technologies more sustainable. So how, uh, why is it making them more sustainable? Because uh, preventing uh, uh, sustainability challenges, acknowledging through transparency what is the current situation and what is happening behind the scenes and tracking the outcomes. Uh, we see all of those processes and why can we prevent it? Due to the fact that we directly pay companies for being sustainable. And um, you talked about criteria. So who set those criteria for, for you to be able to evaluate that this is now sustainable? Is it something you created or is it something worldwide known as, as benchmark? Excellent. Thank you for asking the question because by no means can we decide what is sustainable and what is not. Exactly. So it's UN uh, uh, 17 SDG goals. And under those goals, there is 650 different criteria which were used to develop those goals. So we have data of the 650 parameters that we track and we through live API track the situation of enterprises. Uh, for example, if, the, mm, if there is contamination in the air, it will affect in their ranking. So, uh, right now, uh, we are partner uh, with World Economic Forum. If you go to World Economic Forum slash fire, you will see there, uh, she there, our company. How, uh, why? Because we enable uh, public data of private companies. And as mentioned, use criteria of United Nations due to the fact that we cannot establish worldwide what is sustainable and what is not. We can just prove what are the results of actions that have been taken by enterprises. And so it's data-driven approach on calculating if your actions or results are matching or not. And this is how it proves that you were following certain criteria by being different in terms of results, right? Yes. Exactly. That's that's very interesting, actually. I think you're on the on the right track when it comes to um, the right owning the right perspective psychologically within the consumers. And I really wish you the best of luck, Dr. Vilma, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, uh, a pleasure, and I really much look forward to look forward to changing the behavior from uh, all thinking each other as well as contributing more towards a uh, circular economy and working in this together and tracing the data and as well as increasing the transparency in business operations to, to all the blockchain companies out there. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.